people may be people may be joining uh, shortly and uh, you should have just gotten a message saying that we will be recording this session. Um, just to let you know that. Um, so just to start out with welcome, uh, this is Similarity Check Authenticate V2 webinar for those of you who are either, maybe you've already transitioned to V2 or you are eligible to transition to V2 but maybe haven't done that just yet. Um, so maybe if you, we can answer any questions for you during this session or you can learn a little bit more about the new features of V2. Um, hopefully we can we can get that settled for you. So I'm just going to start out with um, I am Kathleen Mushak. I am a member support specialist with Crossref. I mostly answer member and technical support questions um, and specifically about similarity check. So I probably have uh, corresponded with many of you already. Um, and I'm gonna let my colleagues Fabienne and Gareth introduce themselves quickly before we get started. Yes, I'm Fabienne Michaud. I'm the product manager for similarity check at Crossref. So anything to do with um, the product itself and um, Authenticate B2, I can help you with. And some of you may have been in touch with me already, or maybe I've interviewed some of you before. So I've been involved in a lot of um, beta testing and interviews. Um, so you may, you may have come across me and I may have come across you um, for this. Hi, I'm Gareth Malcolm. I'm the content partner manager at Turn It In. Um, my job title might be deceptive, but um, uh, what I do is I look after the Crossref um, customers here at Turn It In. Um, so I'll I'll be managing your accounts and um, helping with um, getting you set up onto V2 when when the time comes for that to happen. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, uh, so today we're going to go over just some of the basics of Authenticate V2. I'll quickly quickly go over that. Then uh, Fabian is going to talk to us about uh, some new features of V2 and future developments. And then Gareth will take us through a demo so we can see some of the improvements and the new features and, and how it looks um, a little bit different than V1. And then um, We'll give you some key contacts and links if you have questions uh, about any of this. And then we'll have some time hopefully at the end for some Q&A. So um, there is a, a Q&A part of Zoom at the bottom. If you have any questions as we're going through the, the webinar, you can feel free to, to put something in there or wait till the end and do it, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, so I'm just gonna go over some of the basics of Authenticate V2. Um, just start with some quick definitions because there's, um, you know, there's there's some some technicalities of of things that we need to go over, eligibility and cost, and then getting started. So, what I mean by definitions is that uh, there's similarity check, there's authenticate, and there is turn it in, and there's cross ref. And sometimes all of those terms get a little bit jumbled up. So just before we start, I'm just gonna go through them so maybe we can kind of sort out who's doing what. So similarity check is the service that is provided by Crossref. Um, and it is a content comparison tool to detect potential cases of plagiarism. It is powered by the Authenticate software, which is produced by a company called Turnitin. So Crossref and Turnitin are partnering with each other to provide you this service and this software. So. That's just to, to get all of our, our terms straight from the beginning, because I know it can be confusing. Um, eligibility. So I just want to touch on this. Uh, all of you are already similarity check users and have the service. So at one time or another, you had to become eligible in order to apply for the service, which means you had to provide full text similarity check URLs for 90% of your registered content. Uh, some of you may be new to the service. Some of you may have had the service for years. Um, sometimes over time, that percentage may have dropped if you haven't uh, continued to provide full text URLs for your content. And there can be many reasons why that happens. Um, so this is a good time as we transition over to the new 
uh, version of Authenticate is to go back and take a look and make sure that you are staying eligible for the service as that's one of the terms of the agreement when you signed up for similarity check. So what we're doing is going back and making sure that you're at 90% and you have to be at 90% before you can upgrade to V2. Um, so you can check that by going to the eligibility page if you haven't already upgraded and see uh, which DOIs you have that are missing those full text URLs. And there'll be instructions on how to add those. And of course you can contact Crossref if you do have questions about how to get back up to 90%, we can help you out with that. Um, oh, I'm sorry, and here's the just a screenshot of what that page looks like in case you're not familiar with it. It will show you uh, what your percentage is. And then um, my example here, they're at 100%, so that's great. But um, if you're not, there will be a, a button that you can click and it will provide you with a CSV file showing you which DOIs are missing those full, full text URLs. Um, we've had many questions about cost and whether there is any extra cost for the upgrade. There is not. Uh, it will Everything stays exactly the same. So there's no additional charge to upgrade to V2. Uh, we just do want to let you know that as you're transitioning from V1 to V2, you may, you know, as you're setting up your V2 account, maybe you're still using V1. Um, and we just want to let you know that if you are during this, this transition period, um, we would recommend you don't check submissions in both plat and in, in, in both versions as that will cause duplicates in charges because you have a, a per document checking fee. And so if you check a, a submission in V1 and in V2, you will be charged twice for that. So we just want to note that in case um, there's any overlap in your usage of the two versions. And then the last part is just getting started. Um, we have uh, redone our document page, our documentation pages on crossref.org. So you can uh, visit our website there and go to documentation and you'll see uh, all new documentation for V2 users and that will help you get set up. Um, it will walk you through from the very beginning how to sign up for your V2 account when you get that email from Turnitin. Um, we have an administrator checklist so you can kind of go through and there are a list of things to keep in mind as you're setting up your V2 account. Um, and then also some of just the basics of applying exclusions. And one of the things that we do get a lot of questions about is you will have to re-add your users to V2. They won't automatically get transitioned over, but there are some, some ways to help you do that. You can export them all if you have a lot and just upload them again. Um, so there are instructions on, on how to do that and get you started. Um, so that is all for just kind of the basics. I wanted to just quickly go, go through that because those are some of our frequently asked questions. But now I'm going to turn it over to Fabienne and she can show you some of, talk to you about some of the new features. Yes, so in September last year, we launched a, a new version of Authenticate, which has a, a completely refreshed interactive interface and loads of new features. One of these features is a preprint exclusion filter, which clearly labels preprints in the similarity report. It allows users to include or exclude preprints from the report. The exclusion filter be sorry, the exclusion filter can be applied across all publications or at report level only. There's also a new red flag feature that signals the detection of hidden text and suspicious character placements. So the flag will alert you to letters or words in white fonts, which are hidden from view within the text or behind an image and deliberately used to avoid detection by Authenticate. The red flag will also alert you to um, when a, late, a Latin character has been replaced by a Greek or Cyrillic one, for instance. It may or may not be deliberate, a deliberate attempt to avoid detection, but ultimately it's, it's an editorial decision. Um, in Authenticate v v2, you can also create custom section exclusions, which allow you to exclude standard sections such as acknowledgements, funding, ethics statements, etc. So there are some templates available, but you can also create your own and apply them to all your journals. There is a completely redesigned PDF report with clickable links, which can be downloaded, emailed, and printed, and just generally shared. Um, Private annotations, that's a new feature as well. So you can make private annotations in the similarity report, which can be shared with other users within your organizations, your organization by the shared folders. 
annotations will display the date, the time, and the comments and can be edited or deleted as required. You can also upload up to 800 pages to the new version of Authenticate and also upload documents from your Google Drive. But just remember that um, the per document fee is set at a, a maximum of 25,000 words per billable unit. So if you go over the 25,000 words, you're going to be charged for, for two units. Um, the content portal is also completely new and it's a useful tool for Authenticate administrators to check how much of your own published content has been successfully indexed in the Authenticate database and is now searchable. It helps you self-diagnose and fix the content that has felt, that felt to be indexed. And um, so next slide, I think. Okay, so um, over the last year, um, we've received some really useful feedback from Authenticate V2 beta testers and users, and this has helped us improve Authenticate V2. So I'm very pleased to report that there'll be a new release this year uh, with some significant improvements to the way sources are being displayed. And we know that some of you um, are frustrated by the aggregations of URLs, for instance, in the source and um, some um, improvements to the full text view mode. And you'll so also be able to see again, the word count for each source. So that's quite exciting. You'll see some improvements to the PDF report and the user management and content portal um, sections also in that release uh, this year. And in 2023, um, so next year, there'll be a number of really exciting developments. And the first one um, that I'm particularly very excited about is paraphrase detection. So to help you identify paraphrasing, some of you are struggling with tortured phrases, which are a non, the use of non-standard phrases such as bosom disease instead of breast cancer or shrewd phone instead of smartphone. So we're hoping that the paraphrase detection will be able to, um, to pick up on that as well. Um, We've also um, got some feedback from users saying that a bulk document upload functionality to compare a large number of papers across the same issue or conference proceedings, for instance, would be really, really useful. Um, so um, this should be available um, at some point next year. And there'll be a brand new similarity report with more flexible design, again, based on the feedback we've received from beta testers and users. Um, to help you save even more time and there'll be a brand new PDF report with annotations. So what the annotations currently are private, so they will be public and, and that will be included um, in the PDF report, which is not the case at the moment. And you'll find also on the PDF report some information about the red flags, which again are not available at the moment. So that's that's very, very exciting. So. Gareth is going to now um, give us a, a demo of Authenticate V2. Great, thank you, Fabian. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, now, as everyone here is uh, moving across from V1 to V2, you know, I'm going to make the assumption everyone here has seen a V1 report in the past and is familiar with how Authenticate works in, it, in, in, in the old version. Um, so what I'm going to demonstrate to you here is um, not so much how you would expect to use it um, how you have been using it, because actually we think the, the new design is really intuitive to anyone who's used Authenticate in the past. You're going to be able to pick up how it works really easily. Uh, every, a lot of things are going to be familiar. As you can see from what I'm sharing on my screen, like the UI has been improved significantly. It's much cleaner. It's much more modern looking. Um, it's much um, easier for, for you to use, I believe. But still, in terms of how, how your user experience works, it's very similar. You still got your list of sources over here on the right. You still got your similarity score. You can still see matches within the document. And as you would have done in the past, you can click on a match to bring up uh, some of the text. Um, instead of that appearing overlapping on the screen, on this side of the screen, it now comes over on the right-hand side where you can see the um, the matching text and uh, view the full text if you if you want to do that. Um, so a lot of this functionality, as I say, very similar to what you've experienced in the past. So uh, rather than focusing on what you already know, I want to look at some of the new features. Um, 
that you will be less familiar with. Um, sorry, one thing I did want to point out is um, still got all the exclusion settings that you that you would have been used to using in the past as well as right here at the bottom, a new one, which I'll go into in a moment and um, go into now even. So yeah, one of the uh, exciting new features that Fabian mentioned before was our ability to detect preprints. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to do this was uh, because we know that uh, when you match against a preprint, that's obviously quite often it's going to be the fact that a author is just submitting their preprint for publication. And we want to make it as easy as possible for editors to be able to see that something is a preprint and then very quickly make a determination on whether that match should be excluded or not. And um, so you can see here, um, this is new. It says on, on this match here that it's a preprint. You can see it's from archive.org. Um, so you'd expect that to be a preprint. Um, so you would be able to go on here very quickly, double check that the author who submitted the paper to you is the author of the preprint. And then straight away, you can just um, exclude that. And it's disappeared from your match um, straight away. Now you can also decide to either, I'm just going to return that match back. You can also decide to come into here and then you can click on this, which will just exclude every single preprint match um, on the system. And that will just disappear uh, straight away like that. Uh, some people may wish to do that. Some people may not. It's, it's obviously up to your discretion as to whether you just want to ignore any preprint sources. Um, or if you want to investigate them um, individually. Uh, you can also set it up so that the preprint source will just be excluded automatically, like before you even come into this report. So in, in that case, you wouldn't have to do anything at all. So yeah, we really hope that's going to increase the, um, the speed of um, getting through uh, uh, some of your reports. The other thing I wanted to show, um, you. I'm sure you're familiar with um, the ability to exclude like an abstract where you can click on here and then uh, the abstract section will no longer appear. Um, so we have certain sections which have always been built into Authenticate, which you can automatically exclude. What we've introduced now is something called the custom exceptions, which uh, again, Fabian mentioned earlier on. Um, now these you set up yourself. So I've, I've set up some um, before, um, before I came onto this report. Um, but you can set up whatever, uh, as many as you want in, uh, to say whatever you want. But you can see here, what I've done is um, I've set up two uh, custom sections. So one of them is observations and data analysis. And um, if I actually, if I go back to the report, you'll see I have that section down here. And if I were to turn that custom section on, uh, and then go back to the report, and <laughs> you can see all the matches within that section have now disappeared, much as if you were to exclude the abstract section, every match within the abstract section would disappear. Um, so one, one option is like to set up uh, kind of unique sections, which you know that you use across your journals, which you might not be interested in um, seeing the similarity of those sections. Um, but what is also useful, and um, you can see this other one, um, this actually says introduction, but I think it's an Indonesian. Um, uh, I've forgotten which language I used when I actually set this up originally a few months ago, but I believe it's Indonesian. Um, but that's another kind of benefit because the the currently the the abstracts, the um, these ones, the bibliography, the abstract, the methods and materials that those are based upon um, English language um, detection. So. Um, if you had these written in a different language, you wouldn't necessarily detect it and exclude it. So in which case you can, you can set up your own section, you can exclude that, and then you can benefit from that same kind of experience. As I mentioned, these sections are set up by uh, an account admin um, outside of the similarity report. So it's something that you'd have to set up on your account. But once they've been set up, you can choose for them to be applied automatically, or you can come in here and apply them individually um, or whatever kind of uh, workflow you want to you want to work with. Um, next, I wanted to show you the flags. Um, so this little flag section here on the right hand side is where we are going to give you some um, additional insights into your report. This isn't uh, about marking similarity, but it is about trying to give you additional information where there may be cases of um, integrity issues. 
with the report that's um, been gen that been generated. So in this instance, um, we have, and if I click on it, um, an example where characters within the report have been um, within the submission have been replaced. So what someone is, this is to catch people who try to circumnavigate our detection system by changing a letter um, from say the Latin um, alphabet to the Cyrillic alphabet to you and I, those things would both look, it would look exactly the same. You wouldn't necessarily see any kind of discrepancy uh, to a human eye, but in the background, the actual, um, the actual code that's been used does say that these are two different characters. Uh, so people have tried to use this in order to um, get around our detection system because they think like if, if the characters don't match up that we wouldn't be able to see that there's uh, the words match up. Uh, in reality, that's never actually worked because we've always known this has been a way that people have tried to get around our system. And so regardless of what um, alpha, um, what alphabet is being used will always detect a similarity. Um, but we want to flag this because we want you to know if people seem to be doing something which could be underhanded. So you can see there it's highlighted the A um, and then further down at the um, here I've, I, I replaced all the A's and all the O's um, with Cyrillic letters instead of Latin letters. Um, so you can see quite, quite easily there that would be a strong case that somebody has attempted um, something underhanded potentially. Um, and then it would be up to you to decide uh, how you want to handle that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, the other thing mentioned was being able to do annotations. So if you look here, if I highlight um, a section um, of text, um, it comes up with the ability for me to, um, to write an annotation on that. Um, uh, so I can write something, there's an issue with the source, and investigate further. Um, you can just make notes for yourself, which is going to help you to um, uh, to be able to keep track of what you've been doing with your reports uh, when you come back to it later. At the moment, these annotations are only for internal use. Only people within uh, with an actual login to Authenticate will be able to view these annotations. Uh, they're not currently meant for. Uh, providing annota um, annotations to the, which you'd send back to the authors, though we have plans to develop that uh, later in the future. Uh, but in this current iteration, it's just internal. I'm just going to delete that annotation. But talking about sharing the report, you'll see there's this uh, the share button down here in the bottom right hand corner. Um, if you're familiar with using Authenticate, if you wanted to share this similarity report with a user in the past, you would have had to have downloaded a PDF copy um, and then you would have emailed that to the author. Um, we've cut out this one of those steps so that you can email straight from Authenticate. Um, so from here, you can set up, you can decide which pages you're going to use. You can send the whole thing. You can customize it to include just specific pages if you want. And then you can enter the email address of the person you want to send that to, put in a subject, put in an email body. And then that will generate, it will still generate a PDF um, version of the report, but it will automatically email it straight um, to, to the recipient. And as mentioned, you can, you can still download a PDF. So when you click on there, it will, um, you can see it's exporting. So it's generating the PDF report. And It'll only take a second, um, but once it, I'll show you what it looks like uh, when it's done. Just while that's generating, a few other things I'll just point out about the um, the interface is um, you can now um, search through the document, like Control F, you can um, start looking through uh, for specific words if you wanted to find um, a specific parts of it. Um, this was um, not available in the past. Uh, there was no way of interacting um, with what was on the right, uh, the left hand side of the report. And you can zoom, um, zoom in and zoom out um, if you need to get a closer look um, with it. Uh, the report's taking a little bit longer than I was expecting to um, generate. Um, 
that I assure you it should come up in a moment. Um, the joys of the live demos, Gareth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always great the live demo. I think maybe our servers are um, a little bit busy at the moment. Uh, it's probably about the time of day that um, East Coast, uh, sorry, um, East and West are all coming online and um, are all online. And so um, it gets a little bit busier at this time of day. Uh, Okay, well, rather than waiting for an indefinite period of time, I'll, I'll just assure you that it does generate a PDF. And, oh, here, oh, here we go, finally. <laughs> here we go. Um, there we go. So this is the PDF report. This is, uh, it's got a lot more in, useful information on here now, which you can see in this kind of uh, cover page. And so it gives you like an, a, a nice summary um, of the report here. And then you can go into the report, you can see all the matches as you did before. And uh, you can, um, these are all interactive, so you can click on them, which will take you to the, the source. And so this just makes it much, uh, much cleaner, much easier for um, authors or whoever else you might be sending this to, uh, to be able to understand and, and to action appropriately. Great, that was all that I had to share today. Um, I'm going to hand back to Kathleen, I believe. Um, oh, you're on mute, Kathleen. I'm muted. Um, I, we just had a, a quick question from somebody asking if you could show how to navigate through different matches for the same source. Is that something you could easily show, or is that? Uh, sure, let me share my screen again. Um, sure. um, so yeah, if, we, if we've got the same source, we um, when you've got matches, you'll, you'll see the numbers on here, one, two, um, and you can switch between them by clicking onto there. Um, Kathleen did mention before, we've had some feedback about this, that um, it may not be the, the, the easiest user experience. Um, and so actually within the next uh, couple of months, we're gonna be releasing a uh, change. Um, actually, there's gonna be some significant UI and UX changes to um, this similarity report coming out very soon. So what I'm showing you today might not be what you actually see when you start using the system. Um, but at the moment, this, this, is, uh, this is how you move between the, the different sections or the different matches of a report. Um, let's see, it's just moving down um, there. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll wait for any other questions if there's anything <laughs> you could demo on here as well, actually, uh, before I stop sharing my screen. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think the, the only thing we have left in our, our slide deck is some contact info and then some Q&A. So, um, yeah, why don't, why don't you keep sharing your screen and then, because uh, the rest of the time we just have uh, set aside for any questions or comments that people have. So you can feel free to either put those in the Q&A section um, or we can unmute you if you want to ask them live you can do that too um yeah if anyone has any questions about b2 and i believe that um we also were just wondering if if people you know you know how many how many people on on the webinar have actually transitioned to v2 um we we're just curious um those of you who have okay so we have one question who says when do we get v2 so right now um if you are here, we assume that you are already a similarity check user. Um, according to our records, um, it shows that you currently use V1 directly through the browser. Um, if you use, this is something we haven't mentioned yet uh, in this webinar, but if you do use uh, some sort of a manuscript tracking system, like, you know, if Scholar One or Editorial Manager, things like that. Though there are different requirements for that, and we're we're working with those platforms to get integrations going. Um, but all that being said, if you use it in the browser and you're currently on V1, um, then you would just just contact us, and we can see if you're eligible. Um, that being if you're at 90% and we can get you signed up for V2. So you can you can do it now. Um, I'll put in the chat um, the email address. You just contact support at Crossref and we can get you set up on V2 if you're interested. Uh, 
Um, so, and we're getting a couple, a um, couple people have answered whether they're using V1 or V2. I guess if you're, you know, what we're interested in in learning is if you're you're still on V1. Um, I guess why why you're still on V1? <laughs> um, whether that's because you don't know that you can upgrade, um, maybe you don't know how to, or I mean, I guess we're just we're just trying to see if you have questions. Um, and if we can help you get moved over to V2. And for those of you on V2, I've just seen um, a question or rather a statement from um, a V2 user I know very well and who has helped us with interviews and beta testing. Um, I'm hoping that those of you who have provided us with some feedback about V2 um, are pleased with the announcement that there'll be a new release this year with the things that you valued in V1, which are going to, um, to be available in, in V2, and obviously with a refreshed look, but uh, the word count is going to be different. The way the, the view full text mode um, will, be, um, will be available will be different and improved. Um, and the aggregation of URLs, so the, the, the many sources that you can sort of um, have access uh, um, to and, and click on in the source match um, that will be simplified and, and made, made more user friendly. So hopefully the existing B2 users will be very pleased with, uh, with, the cha with those changes. Cool. And it looks like I, I guess um, the chat is deactivated for participants. So that's why um, you weren't able to put it in the chat. Um, sorry about that. Um, Gareth, can you, would you be able, was, uh, would you be able to stop sharing your screen just for a moment? And I can, because um, it, it seems like a lot of people are just asking about how to upgrade. So let me just share this slide. Um, Yeah, so here's here's some key contacts and links so you, you can see. Um, if you are interested in upgrading to V2, then just uh, email us at support at crossref.org and we'll get you we'll get you there. Um, but otherwise, if you are currently on V2 and you have technical questions, you can contact CC support at Authenticate and then copy support at Crossref um, and we'll we'll get your questions answered for you. Um, and then any other questions you have about the service, um, how to be eligible, signing up. You can always just email support at Crossref and we'll help you out. Um, and then there's also turned in status page you can subscribe to if you want to um, see any any bugs or anything that's happening there, or updates or maintenance that's going on. You can check their status page for that. And then again, there's some links for our uh, documentation that we have updated for specifically for v2 to help you get you started so i'll just leave that up for a bit if you want to take note of that if you're interested in upgrading to v2 and you just weren't quite sure how to go about doing that i strongly encourage you to subscribe to the turn in status page you basically subscribe to the page and you get emails directly to your inbox when there's um there's a bug or an incident so you'll you'll know straight away that um, there's something wrong and there's no need for you to check the page it will just come directly to your inbox Um, the other the other thing as well that um, I'd like to mention is that with the Authenticate B2 documentation, there's obviously the turn in pages, which is very, very good about the product. The um, Crossref pages will be useful to users, so how to use the product, but also how to set up the account and how to do all the things that Kathleen has mentioned before. Um, so it's it's useful for both. So do do sort of check those two links. Uh, great. Is there, we can, we can wait a little bit longer if anybody else has any other questions or Gareth, if there's anything else you wanted to show that you thought of? We have another question, Kathleen, about how to upgrade to V2. So you may want to, um, to say again, how to do this. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, basically the first start is just the, the first thing to do to start out is just to email us because then, um, and I mean, I can I can look you up, uh, Zar. Sorry if I mispronounced that right. Um, to see what organization you're with. Um, 
but yeah, you can just email us would be the, the best way. And then we'll get you started because we'll help you check your eligibility and see if anything needs to happen there. And then um, what we'll do is we'll send you a, a, a specific bespoke link to the application um, where you'll just fill out a form and basically that will get you started on um, upgrading your, your account. Um, yeah, that, so, so I would, I would highly recommend just, just reaching out to us first and, and that will get the ball rolling. Um, all right. I think that was all we had. We just, I wanted to show, um, the, the lighthouse on the last slide that Fabian added because I like it. But um, yeah, any any other questions? Um, again, you can always email us if you do have questions that you think of later. Um, otherwise, is there anything else we want to touch on before we we sign off? Fabian, Gareth, we're good. Yeah, thanks. So. Okay. I don't I don't think I don't think we have any any other questions. I'm sort of checking. I think we've okay. Well somebody Thank is you. very pleased with our presentation, so it thanks. does feel good. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, thank you. All right. Um well again, email us uh with questions or if you're interested in updating um upgrading. And um thank you for attending. Uh we did record this um so we can we can always um if you if you wanted to see the demo again uh you can always message us for that as well thank All you right. very much thank you everyone bye-bye